My novel, The Seventh Gate, is an historical mystery that's about many things, uh, most particularly the Nazi sterilization and murder of disabled people that took place in the 1930s. But it's also about a young, young girl named Sophie who's coming of age during this terrible time and who has to hide her thoughts and emotions from those around her, even from her parents, because her father has become a Nazi. Uh, it's it's uh, lastly about her beloved neighbor, Isaac Zarko, a Jewish tailor and mystic who's using his knowledge of Kabbalah to fight against the evil unleashed by Hitler. Having Sophie as a narrator gave me the chance to look at National Socialism from the point of view of a young girl discovering her sexuality. In this scene, she makes reference to a horrible girl at school who she, whom she calls Gurkha. Gurkha is provincial and mean-spirited, and she's the sworn enemy of Sophie and her best friend, a Jewish girl named Rini. In this excerpt, Sophie also mentions her beloved elderly neighbor, Isaac Zarko, and her own little brother, Hansi. Toward the end of June, Mama orders me to do join the Deutsche Bund Meidel, the young German maidens. So two after week, noons a week, I train my public double for her place in the fatherland. Our uniform consists of a knee-length dark blue woolen skirt with a double pleat in the center, a white blouse with two breast pockets, and a black neckerchief. In it, I could be Gerda. No, let's be honest, I am Gurkha. Rini may be Jewish and therefore a blood-sucking insect, but at least she doesn't have to suffer the indignity of looking like she's training to become a Prussian prison guard. Thankfully, we maidens only have to wear our outfits to school on Hitler's birthday and other such happy occasions, so most of the time I can dress as though I were still living in the 20th century. Tony and my mother both adore me in my uniform. When Mama sees it on me for the first time, she clasps her hands together and tells me I've never looked more charming. A statement meant to divert me from understanding that what's truly beautiful to her is my being forced to wear it. But what would she think if she knew that my boyfriend asks me to dress in it at his father's secret apartment? A young maiden on her knees for Germany. That's the heroic sculpture Tonio makes with his bowed back and racing heart every time we close his father's adulterous door behind us. I don't mind in the least that ye handsome young man's polishing of my desires may be the only thing saving my mind and the joy he thrusts inside me when I've got my eyes closed and I'm pleading with him to open me as wide and deep as possible cannot yet be used as evidence against me in any of the Führer's courts. More than anything else, I love the power I feel when he is in my mouth, that dirt-pure sense of being a girl worshipping at an altar, older and far more meaningful than Hitler, Goering, and all the other lesser divinities who've created this world where I have to wear a swastika armband to school and make believe Rini doesn't exist and stand outside Isaac's door without daring to knock because someone with a mind fit for a latrine has decided that culture is bad for the German soul. I adore the pattern of Berlin grime in our dimly lit one-room shack in the fairy tale forest we make with our own bodies with its spider webs in every corner and its gray fungus muck on the shower curtain and the lavender scented foot powder left by Tonio's father's secretary on the chipped red bathroom tiles. In this grotesque refuge for proper behavior that's not on any map in my parents' possession, I can allow myself to believe I've become an island of generosity inside a cold brown sea of neglect and duplicity because I'm using every forbidden trick I've got and I'm discovering I've got plenty to please a young man who may or may not be worthy of me. Maybe that's a determination that ought to matter to me a great deal, but it doesn't, because as, he's as breathless and exalted as God was when he first spurted the universe into existence, and I'm doing what's been done by women since Adam and Eve were first exiled for coiling like snakes around the knowledge of good and evil, and giving myself in ways that every father in the fatherland would despise. Each stain on my young maiden blouse and skirt, my victory, not just over my mother and father, but over my country. You think that's crazy? Well, then consider yourself very fortunate because you didn't live in Berlin in 1934.